Today on People Now, the powerful moment Botham Jean's brother forgives and hugs the former cop who shot and killed his brother. Also on today's show. <laughs> the legend herself, Paula Abdul, is here with all we need to know about her new Vegas residency. So you're a superhero now. I can do magic. Jason Ritter and Alicia Wainwright are here telling us about their new Netflix series, Raising Dion. And the official jeweler for the stars of Bachelor Nation, Neil Lane, is here with some ring bling. It is Mean Girls Day, the hit movie celebrating its 15th anniversary. Jeremy, you're not even wearing pink. Do you even go here? It's all coming up today on People Now. Happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome to People Now. Great to see you. So much to get to today. We are starting off on a very serious note with this. Amber Geiger, the former Dallas police officer convicted of fatally shooting her neighbor, Botham Jean, has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. She told jurors during her testimony that she mistakenly walked into his apartment on September 6, 2018, believing it was her own apartment. Botham Jean, a 26-year-old accountant, was alone in his apartment at the time. She claims that she thought Jean was an intruder and used her service weapon to fire on him twice in what she says was self-protection. According to ABC News, the 12-member jury deliberated for about 90 minutes before reaching a unanimous verdict on Geiger's sentence. During victim impact statements on Wednesday, Jean's father, Bertram Jean, cried on the witness stand as he remembered his son, saying he missed their weekly phone calls. Jean's mother also took the stand on Tuesday, sharing the grief that she has lived with every day since her son's death. But it was the emotional moment between the victim's brother, Brant, and Geiger that made headlines. Watch this. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes. Such a powerful moment there. For the victim's brother, the hug was a sign of peace. He said on the stand, quote, I can speak for myself, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. Very which amazing. was just such a statement of his faith and how important it is for him to sort of clear his own heart and conscience. Yes, and Geiger faced up to life in prison. And after her 10 year sentence was announced, onlookers began chanting, no justice, no peace in the hallway outside of the courtroom. It was not immediately clear on Wednesday if Geiger intends to appeal her conviction or sentence. All right, let's move on to this, guys. Gwyneth Paltrow is revealing she and husband Brad Falchuk waited almost a year to move in together to give their children a little space. In an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, Paltrow explained for the sake of their teenage kids, they didn't want to move too quickly, wanted to be mindful of them. But now that everyone is living under one roof, she says it's great. Glad to hear things are going well. <laughs> Paltrow shares daughter Apple and son Moses with her ex-husband, Coldplay's Chris Martin, while Falchuk has two kids, daughter Isabella and son Brody, with his ex-wife. When asked by Kimmel if Falchuk got to keep any of his stuff, when he moved in, Paltrow said he got to keep some of his stuff. He's got good taste. He's got really nice clothes, and we put some of his chairs from his house in there. He gets the chairs, he gets the clothes. Uh, referring to her one year anniversary, she also joked, We made it, we made it. The couple marked 365 days of wedded bliss on September 29th by sharing a sweet pic with the caption, Year One Done. That first anniversary milestone, very yeah, big deal. It looks it like they is. had a good time. Now they tied the knot in an intimate ceremony at her Hamptons home last September after meeting on the set of Glee during Paltrow's guest appearance in 2010. They didn't go public with their relationship until 2015 at Robert Downey Jr.'s 50th birthday party, though they had been linked for a year before that. Hey, glad to see they're making it all work yeah, and wish them the best. I like those two. All right, on to this. Bachelorette star Wells Adams is still making fans swoon over his very sweet proposal to Modern Family star Sarah Hyland back in July. Now, the two met after he slid into her DM. It works. It does. <laughs> Wells stopped by to promote vodka brand Svedka in preparation for National Vodka Day. It's on Friday, if you didn't know. He shared how he knew it was time to pop the question. Now, even though their trip to Fiji had been planned for a while, not everything went according to plan. Watch. We were planning to go three days after I was supposed to be done with filming in Paradise. So I had to like get everything like ready for that moment like months in advance. Oh, right, because you had no time. Yeah, like I, like I flew back from Mexico, had to get the ring, got on a plane, went to Fiji. Oh my God. So it's like so many points that could, it could fall yes. apart, right? And like it did too. Like so a couple things me were messed up. So I got the ring from Lorraine Schwartz and they were like, don't worry, we, you've got plenty of time to come pick it up. And they sent me the address when I, when I flew back from Mexico. So I was like, great. So I got in my car and I put in, it was like 45th Avenue, 
on the 17th floor, and I was like, interesting. And it was like taking me to like <laughs> Pasadena, and I was like, all right, I didn't know there's like a lot of high rises in Pasadena, right. but let's go. So I get all the way out there, and there's like no building with the 45th floor. I'm like, where am I supposed to go? So I texted her, and I was like, where is this building in Pasadena? She's like, no. It's in New York. And I was like, well, I'm in Los Angeles, Oh guys. my gosh, no. So then they were like, don't worry, we're gonna overnight it to you. I could feel the stress mounting as he told the story. So stressful. <laughs> Wells finally got the ring just a few hours before their flight to Fiji. Now they're on track to live happily ever after, and we love them. All right, watch this. The flashbacks. Victoria Beckham is revealing her favorite fashion memory from her Spice Girls days, and it's her look from their Goodbye music video. According to the Daily Mail, Beckham revealed all during a recent interview on the British talk show This Morning. The Goodbye music video premiered in 1998, was later included on the group's third studio album, Forever. In the interview, the former Spice Girl reveals that she was pregnant with her son Brooklyn at the time, and she added, I had a pixie haircut, I was wearing a Jill Sander dress, which was super chic, and just really natural, nice makeup. Yeah, That's she, how she continued put. saying, I was at that stage of pregnancy when you are a little bit glowy. It was just very natural. And I look back at that video, it really does make me smile because I had little Brooklyn in my tummy. <laughs> Victoria shares Brooklyn, who is now 20, with her husband, David Beckham. They also share 17 year old son Romeo, 14 year old son Cruz, and eight year old daughter Harper. I can't believe that's like 20 years ago. I know. In a recent interview with Glamour UK, the fashion designer also opened up about her strategy to make sure her kids grew up with healthy eating habits. She said this quote, I would never sit down with my kids and skip a meal. They need to see that their mom eats healthily. You need to show little people how to be healthy and happy with who they are. And she adds that having children puts a lot into perspective and you realize they notice everything. Are you noticing that your kids? And watch out what they, they say everything to me. <laughs> yeah. Most importantly, maybe. All right, now watch this. You can't wear a tank top two days in a row and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. So I guess you pick today. Oh, and we only wear jeans or track pants on Fridays. Now, if you break any of these rules, you can't sit with us at lunch. Well, I mean, not just you, like any of us. Okay, like if I was wearing jeans today, I would be sitting over there with the art freaks. <laughs> On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. That is right, everybody. Today is Mean Girls Day, and if you're not wearing pink, then you can't even sit with us, and Get I'm not here. wearing pink. Get out of here, Jeremy. Why didn't you wear pink? I forgot, guys. You don't like Mean Girls? Yeah, it's, it's a huge statement against Mean Girls. <laughs> but you can celebrate the movie's 15th anniversary with a special screening of the film. Watch. This October 3rd, my friend Busy Phillips and I are going to be hosting a live streaming of the movie Mean Girls to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the movie. Woo, that movie's 15 years old. If that movie was a human person, it would be wearing booty shorts and ignoring me in public. <laughs> <laughs> this news is so fetch. See what I did there? Uh, Another Mean Girls reference. Uh, Tina and Busy will be talking all about the film, as well as playing trivia, answering fan questions, and giving away prizes. Make sure you tune in 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday on the Mean Girls Broadway Facebook page. Don't worry, if you can't tune in on Facebook, then you can pick up the special anniversary Blu-ray. It features pink packaging, deleted scenes, bloopers, and so much more. Yeah, in honor of October 3rd, aka Mean Girls Day, we want to see your favorite gifts from the movie. So send them in using the hashtag people now. You might see them later on in the show. 15 years for that. It's like all these flashbacks today. No, it's crazy. Yeah, we got the we got the little Blu-ray samples. It really does look mm -hmm. cool the way they package well, it up. Well, it's a movie that anytime it's on, I always watch and I always laugh. Like it's always going to be funny. Yeah, and you've Brilliant. even reenacted some of the scenes with Jonathan Bennett. I have. He plays Aaron Samuels. We hosted New Year's Eve together a couple <laughs> years ago. I do have an Instagram video on my Instagram. Oh, Way check it out. down. Yeah, it's got Maybe you should bring, bring it back to the top. Yeah. Okay. Next October 3rd. <laughs> Stay with us, guys. Paula Abdul will be live on our couch talking Vegas Idol puppy love and so much more. We're very pumped for that. Plus, jeweler to the stars and to Bachelor Nation, Neil Lane is going to be here with everything we need to know about the world of engagement rings. Stick around. All right, William Jackson Harper is the latest celeb to swing by couch surfing to take a look back at some of his most beloved performances. So we all fell in love with him on NBC's The Good Place. They're currently in their fourth and final season. On couch surfing, William opens up to Lola about why the show's creators decided now was the perfect time to say goodbye. Hold out your hand. Aww and think about a book. Oh, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it. I've never even seen it happen yet. I wanted to see that actually happen. All right, cool. That's awesome. This is the final season. Yeah. That doesn't make me very happy. No, me either. <laughs> <laughs> what did you yeah. make of that decision? Michael Short said enough is enough. I'm pulling the plug. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he basically brought us in the room. He said, like, look, guys, you're all trash. 
you know, <laughs> I want y'all to go home. No. Um, no, he, um, he's committed to the story that he wanted to tell, and I, I respect it. All good things come to an end, right? Yeah. About a decade ago, William starred on The Electric Company with Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda. Can anyone say freestyle battle? Oh. Ready, draw. Where do I start? Oh, oh this is dreadful. dreadful. You want some negative words? words? I got a head full of rhymes. rhymes. <laughs> that are terrible <laughs> than kick it. And I can make the terrible <laughs> when I kick it. Um, this was, uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is The Electric Company. Uh, where I was a 30-year-old man yelling at kids, and we were doing this in like these, uh, in these like green, like spandex bodysuits, and like we could only move our hands like this. <laughs> so you're rapping. And just rapping like, like this. this. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to be like hardcore when you're squared yeah, out like tough. that. Yeah, and I love that he still remembers almost every word, yeah. right? And when he was here on People Now, he was fantastic. One of the most mm -hmm. genuine people we've talked to in a while. You can dive into a bunch of William Jackson Harper's other roles when his episode of Couch Surfing drops on People TV this Friday. Now take a look at this. I guess since you're here, we'll do a little tour, shall we? <laughs> so let me take you into the living room. I love sitting out here and having a glass of wine. I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't happen very often. We'll light the fireplace and we'll just sit here and enjoy some peaceful time. I went to Kenya years ago, so a lot of these pictures I took when I was in Kenya. I got this um, in the village that I'm from in Greece. Um, they gave me this beautiful icon that they made, so. All over my house I have sentimental things that mean something where I'm from and my parents and Greece and stuff like that. Um, we have a garden. I've had a garden since I was young. You see you've got, you know, your own cherry peppers. I bring these in to eat and the guys love it. So like, they'll eat them and eat them and someone will get the really spicy one and then they'll start crying. It's pretty funny. Just remember, and who can forget that Paula Abdul is forever your girl, especially now with the official launch of her brand new Vegas residency, October 22nd. And Paula joins us now to talk all about it. Thanks for being here. Good Thank to you. see you. Did seeing that video see you bring back a lot of memories? You know, it's the 30th anniversary. It's crazy. Yeah. Time goes by so quickly. Yeah, it really it does. does. It's really interesting. By the way, can we just say this before we get into it a bit? You were just telling us you were on the flight with Billy Bob Thornton on the way to New York. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm proclaiming he is the most charming, nicest human being ever. Well, he's going to be here, and we can't wait to and tell him. And you also watch his show, Goliath. And I'm, yeah, well, I didn't, I, I was going to say that, but I'm a fanatic over Goliath. Okay. <laughs> uh, my sister turned me on to it, and he's, he's just a phenomenal actor. Yeah. Well, we're going to pass the word along when yeah. he's Please here. Please do. Um, and I, by the way, I love the idea of you being even remotely starstruck by anyone. Oh, Most people right? are just fangirling over you. Right? I do, it was, yes, of course. Let's talk about this new Vegas residency. Why'd you decide on the title Forever Your Girl? You know, in the, in the strangest way, I just always feel like I represent I'm Forever Your Girl because people just remember me that way and I feel like, I am i don't know, I'm a cheerleader for everyone. Yeah. And it just is, it's, even when, the, when my friend Oliver Lieber wrote that song for me, it's, it's just who I am, you know what I mean? I can't explain it, but. Yeah. Well, it works, and yeah. I think we're all here for it. It makes a lot of sense. Why <laughs> was now the right time for a residency for you? Well, you know, three years ago, I decided I wanted to get back into performing and getting on stage and touring. I hadn't done it in 28 years. Um, I was busy doing other things, and I got a taste of it, and I, I loved it. I was, you know, worried, well, is anyone gonna show up? But it was incredible, and I did, you know, the Toll Package Tour with Boys to Men and New Kids on the Block, and I said, you know what, this is for me. And the type of show that I produce and, and choreograph and do all the things to, it belongs in Las Vegas. It's yeah. a, and the show's at the Flamingo, and it's such a legendary room, and um, right when you walk in the theater, you're already immersed into the show. It's very interactive. People will be seeing kick butt dancing, lots of <laughs> incredible technology, and be prepared to take 
take part in the show. I, the Vegas shows, they do seem to be like next level. And we think about all the stars. Look, you, you're, you're joining all the greats as, as well as, you know, it's all these icons, Britney, Celine, Gaga. Everyone does a Vegas residency, everyone who's anyone. <laughs> Is there an initiation into sort of that world that like, hey, here are the tips. Have you met with any of the other people that have done it before? Well, no, if there were, I didn't get in. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, no, it's just incredible. I did a soft opening and. August and the most incredible thing was just a few doors down was Janet Jackson performing and you know when you think about that it's such a it's awe-inspiring to know that that could actually happen you know I started in my humble beginnings as a Laker girl hmm. um, and to be able to like wake up and be able to go into the famous legendary uh, flamingo room where everyone has has played the Rat Pack and be able to be there and have uh, people from all over the world come. It's just been, it's been exciting. Yeah. I've had an incredible journey in the past 30 years. Yeah. And the dancing is no joke. You have a really rigorous schedule. I read something like 9.45 a.m. to 7 p.m. I mean, talk me through all the work that it, goes into this. It, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, you know, I it, first starting with having morning talks with my body. Feet don't fail me now. Um, <laughs> I have to warm up and, and make sure that I take care of myself. I train um, with with the trainer. I do Pilates. I do yoga. I but I love dancing. A dance has been such a part of my life forever. That um, thank God for muscle memory. Yeah. But it's a very vigorous show, um, nonstop, and it's just fun. It's heartwarming and. Uh, yeah, sometimes we do eight to 10 hours a day. Oof. It pays off though, because you're super fit and strong. Thank you, I try. And yeah. and I jump off of buildings too, no. <laughs> when I you do it all. When I performed at the Billboard Awards, everyone was talking about me jumping uh, off of a 15 foot platform. Right. And they're going, well, you have to do it in Las Vegas. I went, really? So I get it done at the during the first number, get oh, so, it over with. I was going to ask you about that, if there were elements of that billboard's performance. So that happens at I the beginning. I get it over with at the beginning. Any other inspirations or, or things that you did in the Billboard Music Awards that are making it to Vegas? Well, you know, the cool thing is that everyone in, in the audience is up singing and dancing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just... It's a lot of a tribute to everyone's memory growing up with my music. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to talk about this. You recently reunited with your fellow American Idol alums, your, the judges, Simon Cowell, Randy Jackson on Kelly's talk show. Yes. That must have been such a fun reunion. What was that like? You know, it, I got to tell you, all of us being together on Kelly's show, first of all, to celebrate Kelly, you know, I, I wrote on her wall, I definitely am your second proudest mama. <laughs> because I, I just, it, for me, it's so heartwarming to see her succeed so beautifully and uh, it was great for all, us, all, all of us to be there and, she, and the craziest thing is it doesn't matter if I haven't seen these guys for six weeks, six months, six years, it, there's something strange and beautifully magical that when we sit down together it's as if we've never skipped a day yeah. mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened. It was a lot of fun. It was very reminiscent. The audience went crazy. Um, to see us together. Oh man, yeah. we were crazy watching it. It really does have that feeling like, man, this is family. And, and as viewers, we all connect to you in that way. Okay. We also saw, and people have been talking about Simon losing like 20 pounds. You're the fitness queen. Did you give him any tips oh, well, along I, the way? Well, the first thing I did, I said, you look good. He goes, I know. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, I know. Yeah. He, no, he does. And, and being a father suits him very well. Yeah, well, let's talk about, back to that Billboard uh, performance a bit, uh, Kelly Clarkson hosted at that. Uh, was it kind of fun reuniting with her under the Billboard Music Awards uh, banner and kind of that whole live show experience? Everything lately with my career feels surreal. Yeah. I feel like, um, like it's 25 years ago starting all over again. The coolest thing for me was we were on stage together. I hadn't seen her for a, a little while and she was going, oh my God, I can't believe what you just did. And I'm going, oh my God, I'm so excited for all that's happening to you. And it was like, while on live television. Yeah, like And the, the craziest one. thing, she was as sick as a dog that night. Were you aware of what was yeah. happening as she it was She let happening? me know while I was on stage with her. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, this is a, she's a trooper. Absolutely. She really is. Uh, there's also some rumors out there. You're gonna be joining X Factor All-Stars judges panel. Is that mm -hmm. happening? It's all over. I think it's happening. <laughs> it may be happening, I'm not sure. If it were to happen, what's your favorite thing about rejoining that? My most favorite thing is the fact that um, collaborating and working with Simon again, because 
it's so spontaneous. And my least favorite thing is it is the purpose is what I just told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spontaneity. Um, anything goes. But it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. There's no phoning it in, mm -hmm. so to speak when I'm working with Simon. Yeah. And there's a chemistry that's undeniable. I don't have any brothers, and I certainly know what it's like to have yeah. three of them, Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and as fans, look, we follow along with the great things and some of the tough things as well. This past April, you experienced the loss of your father after a battle with Alzheimer's a little over a, a year after your mother passed away. Yes. How are you doing with all of that now? You know, it's there's not a day that goes by that I don't think, think of them and speak to them and and hope that they're happy and free, free from pain. Um, and I, I talk a lot to them, talk to God, and I, I just hope that they're proud of me. You know, one thing about my parents that they instilled in me is that you know what, kindness is king. Have empathy, be present for people, um, be loyal. And you know what, that's they, that's very important to me. So. I hope that they're happy. I know my father's saying, well, what the hell are you doing jumping off 15 foot yeah. <laughs> But, but he also knows that I'm a daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, I also want to talk about this. You have this adorable dog, Bessie Moo. Moo. We are obsessed with Bessie Moo on Instagram. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> what is Bessie Moo's personality like? She is, she's a character. She's an actress. Um, she gets her nails done. She gets a podicure every week. Um, she does not like the color red. She only likes pink. Um, she, I taught her how to stick her tongue out. I was gonna say, did she, do you brush the tongue? It's there, she, it seems like well, it. Well, I, my fans, I took a, a, a video that went viral and I called her Twerky Moo because she, when she sees me, her butt moves so fast. So I said Twerky Moo and then everyone was saying, well, if you can only get her to stick her tongue out. And about um, six and a half years ago, I spent almost three months and everyone in my house, was, we were consistent of sticking our tongues out and baiting her with a treat. No way, you really taught her to stick uh, the tongue out. Three months later, that's her personality, that's her trademark, and she knows it. <laughs> she knows that she gets a that's lot of That's the most attention. amazing, you can train the dog to do that. Oh, Never knew. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Unbelievable. All right, we're gonna Bessie play, we have a little time to take a walk down memory lane, a little game we like to call Oh Snap. We're gonna show you a picture from your past that will hopefully spark a fun, memorable story from the moment in the photo. You ready for this? Okay. Here we go, let's start with this one. You and Ryan at the 2003 Teen Choice Awards. First of all, the yellow highlights. The blonde hair, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. What goes through your mind when you think back about that phase? Well, that was like the first season experience, so I was overwhelmed yeah. at how big the show had already become. But um, yeah. Ryan in those highlights and me with that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. All right, next photo, you and Solange Knowles during American Music Awards in 2001. Wow. Oh my goodness. You know what, that was that was a cool time for me because I was corresponding for Entertainment Tonight at that time and other artists were going, what are you doing? I go, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm big fans of the Knowles. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, so thank you so you. much for yeah. stopping here. And everyone, Paula's Las Vegas residency, Forever Your Girl, launches October 22nd. At the Flamingo. Woo! <laughs> Cleo Wade has been referred to as the millennial Oprah, no big deal. She became insta-famous for her uplifting and inspiring poems and prose. Celebs like Reese Witherspoon and Katy Perry, they follow her for daily inspiration. Yeah, Cleo is also the author of Where to Begin, which comes out later this month. She sat down with us to talk about everything from her book of poems to her pregnancy after revealing on Instagram that she and her partner, Simon Kinberg, are expecting their first child together. She told us how her pregnancy made her rethink the world, our culture, and even her writing. Watch. I think deciding to have a child is one of the ultimate acts of optimism, right? I mean, it's saying to the world that, you know, I'm prepared to do all that I can to make you a place that's inhabitable for this being that didn't ask to be here. And it's also believing that the world around us can be safe and just and equitable and equal and in a loving, nurturing place for, for this being. And so it's definitely impacted, you know, my sense of optimism and my belief in hope uh, in, a, in a really big way. I think that there's something that really reminds you of just how fragile your own life and body are when your body is constantly speaking to you, right? I mean, right now, like my, my baby is like kicking as I sit here. And so when something's constantly reminding you um, 
that you know you're just flesh and bones and that everything is about you is in your existence are so fragile you really start to ask yourself you know what am i going to do here with this one fragile life how big can i make it how much can i contribute with it uh, so that is that's definitely been something that was on my mind a lot as i was writing this Although most people are excited for her, Cleo faced a troll on her social media who shamed her for being pregnant during the height of her career. Can people just stop? Yeah, right. Always on, one to take on the high road. Cleo responded to the troll with love, compassion, and empathy. But what motivated her to even respond in the first place? You know, I always think that even in the toughest confrontational moments, they can be learning moments and teaching moments. And even if it's just teaching um, someone how to stand up for yourself while also showing another person love and respect. That's so important to me. And so when this person, you know, kind of attacked women for, um, as a whole, not just me, for um, taking, uh, you know, basically having children at the height of their career and not understanding why someone would have that, I kind of reminded them that, you know, you know, someone doesn't have a moment, they have a life. And also, a lot of the reasons that it's difficult for women to have children in the world we live in are the societal standards that are built up against her that oppress her ability to make that decision, whether it's being someone who's working 40 hours a week and still isn't making a living wage, you know, whether it's not being able to go into any hospital and get health care um, that is affordable um, so that you know that you can safely have this child without going into bankruptcy. And so I wanted to really take that moment as an opportunity to say, you know, like, A, when you talk about any women anywhere, you're talking about me. And if you talk about me, you're talking about any woman anywhere. And so when I stand up for myself, I don't feel like I only am standing up for my own decisions, but I'm standing up for um, women everywhere and, and all the things we face in different spaces. All right, in honor of Mean Girls Day, we've been asking you to send your favorite gifts from the iconic movie. Let's take a look at what you're sending. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I think we have them. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> Mom, can you pick me up? I'm scared. It's a great one. <laughs> I like when Jeremy reads them. Doesn't even go here. That's one of my favorite references. All right. I didn't wear pink, so I feel like I'm just out of you, it. Yeah, you dropped the ball, Jeremy. Sorry, guys. Keep sending in your gifts, but for now, we move on to this. Watch. Hey, babe, it's time to go. Just put your dishes in the sink, okay? I don't want any more ants. Now, Dion. What is happening? Raising Dion, another highly anticipated Netflix series, follows a mother raising her seven-year-old son who discovers that he has superpowers. Yeah, well, while well, Dion is full of energy, just wants to fit in with the popular kids at school, his widowed mom, Nicole, must work tirelessly to not only help Dion control his powers, but hide them for his protection. Today, we are joined by two of the show's stars, Alicia Wainwright, who plays Dion's mom, and Jason Ritter, who plays his godfather. Thank you both for being here. Hello. I like watching you watch it back, and you seem very happy yeah. and very proud of it. It's good memories, yeah. I mean, Dion's every time Josiah's face is just like wide-eyed with wonder. He's yeah. just so cute. I, he really so is. cute. <laughs> and, and you know what? From far away, and obviously seeing that, it's this superhero series vibe. But up close, it really does become much more than that. What surprised you most about the script when you first kind of encountered it in the storyline? Um, I just loved that it was so grounded. It's based on the reality from the perspective of the mom. So she's just trying to go to work, get her kid to go to school, and then it's kind of, you know elevated that he has superpowers. So now you're just kind of taking and putting motherhood to an extreme. But it is grounded in a very real world of just being a mom yeah. to a young boy. Absolutely. What about for you? Uh, I just, I, I mean, I, I love uh, superheroes and sci-fi stuff. And, uh, and I, I love that it had this beautiful marriage to all of this grounded family drama and stuff. Um, but I also, I also was really, um, excited about the way the story was told. Like by the end of every episode, there's you have some new piece of information that I mean they do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's called storytelling. It's called storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Little tease, like, kind of oh, keep us interested, I keep us going. The next one. Right, right. The special, they make us binge. The special effects exactly. are really cool, but a lot of times that means you're filming, pretending things are there, swatting yeah. things away. <laughs> yeah. How weird did that get on set? 
I mean, we have pretty big imaginations, uh, but some of them are actually practical. So um, things that we directly interact with, there's actually just like a special effects guy in the back holding it. It's like super old school style with like a string going down holding the thing. It's because you have to like grab it right. or something that it's like, you know, and also it's way cheaper and it looks real because it's actually a real thing mm -hmm. floating. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and yeah. I guess for some of those things though, it's like we really have to trust these guys and post. Amount of Is yeah. the editing going to work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. you, you never know. They could easily make you look crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there are some fun outtakes just for the editors that, that are ridiculous. Oh, right? Booper style. <laughs> yeah. like, the thing is over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about this. The show's plot, it's obviously full of these mysteries. Uh, describe the best way you can without spoiling anything. Maybe the twist that is going to blow viewers' minds the most. How can you delicately deal with that for um, us? I think you just really don't know who to trust. <laughs> yeah. in, in, in the story, I think, especially when you realize that people have been kind of harboring secret information and, and then they slowly start to reveal that they knew more than they let on from the beginning, um, is probably, you know, the easiest way to not say anything while saying something. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and Michael B. Jordan is an executive producer on the show. Was yes. he on set a lot? He can't, uh, yeah, when he, I mean, especially when he, he the scenes, right. he's yeah, in it yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, but um, he was shooting uh, Just Mercy while he was uh, shooting Raising Dion, so he was going back and forth, so he was in town and also like incredibly available if ever I had questions mm -hmm. about the tone of the show um, or ideas and stuff. He was always super helpful with kind of guiding me. Yeah. Biggest surprise about working with him? Maybe the takeaway. How much he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The man just like from Hamilton, he's just nonstop. Yeah. It's just constantly moving. He has projects in development. He's um, starring in, in TV and film. And then also just like, you know, trying to create a brand and a platform for his uh, production company. So does he just have yeah. free weights around at all times? Just it's downtime. <laughs> like, hold on, let me read through this. Real I quick, never because saw it looks like that. that. Yeah. 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 He's, he's fully uh, ripped. But yeah, I, <laughs> I, uh, I asked him. I like I was like so what's going on like in the next couple weeks and he his schedule was so crazy and, and he was like what about you I was like just this yeah. <laughs> like after like actually an hour I'm done and then yeah. good till next week uh, <laughs> uh, like not working out or anything yeah yeah um, oh no plenty of time to work out yeah yeah. Not yeah. Uh, yeah right yeah you were talking about Josai and those wide eyes and how just great he is um, Josai Young yeah. talk about him and having a kid on set does that kind of keep things light and fun I feel like it could add to that. I mean, a kid's laughter is like yeah. the yeah. best thing ever, but. Yeah, I got pretty obsessed with trying to make him laugh uh, <laughs> and trying to cheer him up. Cause sometimes, you know, even though he could only work four hours a day, it's it's like intensive focus. And yeah. so, you know, he could kind of get tired and things like that. And so there was like <laughs> balance for me of like, uh, let's keep our energy up. And then like, okay, that's a too much energy. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's tone it in <laughs> a little bit. But uh, but he was so much fun. He yeah. was great. Yeah, and Alicia, your character, you're playing a single mother who lost her husband, who was played by Michael B. Jordan. So you're raising Dion, you know, by yourself. How did you connect to this character? Um, well, I when I read it, it I just felt like it was kind of an homage to single motherhood because they really are the superheroes and Nicole is also a superhero in this story. I come from a family, a single mother family, and so I know the difficulties and trials and, and how hard it can be to also, you know, create a safe home environment, but then also make sure your kid is having fun and doing the best that they can in school and in life. And so that's what I took out of the story and that's what I hope people gather yeah. when they see it. And then yeah. Jason, you're a super dad in real life. I am. Turns out, welcome to the baby girl in December. Yes. Uh, how's dad life? What's the biggest? It's fantastic. This is the longest I've been away from her, so I'm like. Oh, really? Wait, how <laughs> yeah. long so far? Uh, days? Six days or something. Oh, wow, or a long no, time. It will be six days in total. Okay. Uh, yeah. Best yeah. part about being a dad and then the hardest part. Uh, the best part about being a dad is just her that, you know, I feel like she and I have a special connection. We sort of uh, get in trouble together. And um, <laughs> she's just a baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But she can drink. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, she's a little adventurer. She, like, wants to get into everything and try to climb things. And I'm, like, trying to help her and uh, um, instigate. Yeah, instigate again. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I didn't learn my lesson from the show. <laughs> yeah, um, right. And uh, the hardest part is just that you know it's it, it requires a lot of time and focus, and there's a there's certain exhaustion levels uh, that that come into play. Lack of sleep um, and all that. Lack right? of sleep. Yeah. But you know you're like tired, and then she goes. 
Come yeah. On. Turns yeah, out yeah. humans. You, you got me again. <laughs> it, it, it turns out humans can function on like zero sleep. You just be a zombie and still do normal yeah. things. Yes. Somehow. Yeah. Um, we have time for a game. Are you ready for this? Yes. Let's it's around a people now confess sesh. Here's here we go. It's oh. real easy. You just pull a question out of the jar yeah. and oh. answer it as honestly as possible. Oh boy. Okay, I'll go for it. All your deep dark secrets. <laughs> We're ready to hear them. <laughs> Where are the bodies buried? <laughs> uh, if you could give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Um, I would say, uh, I, would, I would tell myself to not be so concerned with what other people think. I think I eventually got there later in, in high school, but I spent, I spent like a, maybe a year or two too long trying to like be cool, trying to be like everybody else so that I could have friends. And I should have settled into my uh, self earlier, because as soon as I did, I made the friends that I still have for life. Yeah. Oh wow, that's really good advice. Alicia, yeah. What about you? Uh, oh wait. Oh, this question. Yeah. Oh, um, I would say that just don't take yourself too seriously, and if you want to do something, just do it because, like, you know, don't live life with no regrets at all. <laughs> but <laughs> but if you feel that gut instinct, take it because you know you maybe won't get that chance again. Mm. All right, nice. No both of you. All right, let's do another one. Right. No regrets. Like no regrets. <laughs> 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 um, what's your biggest pet peeve? Uh, I hate uh, nose and mouth sounds. So oh. like if you're clearing your throat or chewing with your mouth open, it just really rubs me the wrong way. Was this about Jason? Funny? I know. <laughs> I know. I as soon as she did that, I went, oh. <laughs> I, did, I did hear that. Now I'm very confident. Wow, so fast. Though. No, it's, if it's in, integrated in a conversation okay. or something that's completely normal, that's fine. It's just like, I was on the flight uh, here to New York, and this lady was constantly clearing her throat. Oh, and I just gosh. was, every time I had to put my earphones yeah. on. Yeah, that is, how about for you? Uh, I, nothing gets me to a state of rage faster than stepping in dog poop. Oh. Uh, I'm like, I, I had a great day, and then I'm like, that feels squishier than sidewalk should. And then I'm like, where are you, and how can I find you, and take your dog from you, and give the dog to an owner who respects the dog? Did this happen? <laughs> and respects clean, the uh, rest of the public. Does this yes. happen yeah. often? Not too often. <laughs> Not too often, but be, it's, now it's because I walk around like this. <laughs> You've been forced to. Yeah. It. But it's true. That is enraging. I, ooh, Disrespectful. So angry. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys, we're going to work through all these issues while <laughs> Uh, while you're still here. Uh, everyone, be sure to check out Raising Dion, streaming on Netflix October 4th. <laughs> All right, the talk co-host Marie Osmond opens up about remarrying her first husband in this week's issue of People. Marie telling People, nothing is an accident. I'm a spiritual person, so I believe God has his timing. Marie remarried her husband, Stephen Craig, 26 years after their initial divorce. Now the actress and singer is opening up about finding true love again. Marie was just 22 and fresh off her smash hit variety series, Donnie and Marie, when she first married Stephen. She met him as a teen. Less than a year after getting married, the couple welcomed their son, Stephen Jr. At the same time, Marie, who had been performing since she was a young teen, found herself at a crossroads in her professional life. She tells people, everyone was telling me my career was over. Eventually, her marriage to Stephen had some trouble. They called it quits in 1985. Marie reveals that she was a single mom and didn't quote, know how I'm going to pay my rent, let alone feed my kid. So I decided I had to get back to work. Marie recalls buying potential stage looks from the Limited Express and hand sewing sequins onto the costumes. Then within two years, Marie found herself at the top of the country music charts with a revitalized career and married for the second time to actor Brian Blossel. Reflecting on her marriage to Brian, which ended in 2007, Marie admits that she rushed into the relationship saying, you really need time on your own and you need to know that you're a good person in order to find a good person. After her painful divorce from Brian, Marie reveals, I never wanted to be married again. So when she reconnected with Steven through their son, it was an unexpected surprise. She tells people, the thing about a second marriage is that you realize things you thought were so important aren't. I love being with my husband. He's the sweetest man I know. He lives to serve and really listens to people's needs. Her son Steven was initially a little scared of his parents getting back together after so many years, which should be a wild experience. But eventually, Marie says her son Steven was getting married, and she says, we realized we can't go to our son's wedding and not be married. Married. Marie adds, so we got married a few months before he did. He joked that he never thought it would happen, but it did. <laughs> and you guys, make sure you check out Marie Osmond in Lifetime, The Road Home for Christmas, premiering later this month. Hello, everybody. I'm Sandra Lee. Welcome to Lily Pond. Please come in.
Okay, this is my favorite room in the whole house. This is my desk, which I love, love, love. I am an avid antiquer. I antique every weekend. I know all the best tea antique shops all over the United States of America and most of the ones in Europe. I found this desk. It was the first piece of furniture I found for the entire house. Started with this desk. Books I found in France and I just bought a whole ton of books and I bought suitcases to bring them home in an old antique store that cost next to nothing but they are beautiful and I love them. These are all family photos and I had the photos uh, all scanned in and printed out in a beautiful kind of brownish gold sepia color so that they match the frames. That is my grandmother's piano and that's her wedding picture and my two Emmys. Everybody wants to hold them when they come in the house. All right, Jeremy, who's a girl's best friend? Diamonds. Yes, and our next guest knows everything and then some about them. He's the jeweler to the stars and for The Bachelor. He can now add author to his resume with his new book, Style Your Wedding with Neil Lane. Please welcome to people now, Neil Lane. There's himself, the book. The man, the There's legend. the man. <laughs> All right, first book, Why Was Now the Time? <laughs> when? When was I doing? I'm waiting 25 years to okay, do this. Yeah. I mean, I have all this aesthetics, all this knowledge. I've done so many weddings, been so many places. I have so much to share. And the pieces finally kind of came together. Oh my God, it came together. Yeah. It's taken a long time, it takes two years. Yeah. Yeah, doing your research, I found an interesting tidbit. You initially weren't going to be a jeweler, you wanted to be a painter. So, how did you get into this business? Because, <laughs> well, I come from Brooklyn. I was about 16, I started looking at what people threw out in the street, found it, started selling it on 26th Street and 6th Avenue, made some money, didn't want to sell my work because I didn't know how, so I started selling all this stuff. Then I moved to California and I started doing the same thing and then I became Neil Lane and designed and, rings. And, and here we are. And yeah. Here we are. <laughs> and now most people, or a lot of people, might, uh, maybe I'm speaking for myself, know you because of the Bachelor franchise, Bachelor Nation, obviously you provide all the rings for those fantastic shows. I've got to say, every time this, there they are, these moments happen on the show, I'm always with my wife and we're just loving it. How much time does a Bachelor contestant have to choose the ring? Because for me, it took me forever. Well, it's Hollywood time right. and real time. Right. It's hours of, of going through with him. So there are and, hours and hours. And they cut it, you know, cut yeah, of course. slice and dice it. It's a process, but it's, it's real time and Hollywood time. Yeah. 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 From your experience, what's the most common thing a Bachelor contestant looks for when choosing a ring? He's looking for the ring that makes her a princess. He's looking for the ring which he imagines she's going to wear forever. That's the most beautiful ring in the world. That it's about love. Mm -hmm. It's just about love. All right, you've got some rings here. We want to start with the romantic ring. Show us, show us the rings and tell us a little bit about them, just really briefly, like it's a tweet. Here the we go. Rose gold, morganite pear shape, reminiscent of my mother. Ring in the 1960s. I grew up looking at her pear shapes. So I wanted to do a romantic ring based on my mom. Can I hold oh, it? I love that one. Can I hold it up and take a look. So pretty. All right, while we're doing that one, there we go. There's the shot. Woo! That thing is beautiful. And I love the coloring, Ooh. by the way. Yeah, it's very feminine, very romantic, very sweet. Yeah, wow. Very sold. And what else do you have here? Oh, the lavish one. Oh, well, this is very lavish. An emerald cut. Reminiscent of the Art Deco period, uh, the Rockefellers, filled with diamonds. So your wedding with tons and tons of flowers and everything. I think I need an insurance policy just to hold it. I'm yeah. Nervous. That rings the more the merrier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, what's the next one we have here? Oh, sorry, there we go. This is the modern ring, very modern, with an oval shaped diamond, Ooh. little halo of diamonds, but black diamonds to give it an edge. They just bring it pop to a life. Modern, clean. Yeah. It is very clean, and I like the band. Yeah, right? the, the black band. diamonds are very unique. Well, I think it's unusual. It's a little edgy. It lifts it up. Yeah, I love I like it. That. Do you see, find people going for more clean, simple cuts these days? I think just depends on the budget, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, that's what the book is going to do. Yeah. You're going to find out what your style is. Yeah. Okay. So next yeah. we have rustic, right? I have, well, now we have elegant. 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 Okay, here we go. Okay. Elegant. The elegant. Elegant is an oval, very sweet ring, diamonds around it. The band is beautiful. A little arch, a halo of diamonds saying, I love you. Mm. There we go. Let's tilt down there. I love that circle, the circle of diamonds around the center one. That's really beautiful. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm mesmerized just looking. I know. I know. We're just like drawn into the diamonds. Okay, what do you Future have next? Future husband out there. Yeah, yeah right. right. Taking notes. notes. <laughs> oh, please, please. This is the rustic. Okay, this is the rustic. A round diamond, little diamonds around. The band is called elegant and simple. So when you're doing the tomatoes, you know, getting the nail, you know, 
dirt in your nails, it won't make a difference. The ring is going to hold up. All right. What's your favorite style ring? Oh my God. I, I think I'm going to go back to the romantic one. Yeah. The no, that's shape. my favorite. I think that's this is so beautiful. Know, this last and one. there's one more. Ooh, can I hold okay. this one? Yeah. That's the vintage one. Oh my goodness. So my whole career is about vintage and finding that aesthetic. How do I bring that to America? And the marquee sh shape is an old fashioned shape and it's sprinkled with diamonds, twisted bands, lots of love, lots of romance in it and really sparkly. Wow. Beautiful. I'm going to take Neil this romantic Lane. ring with me. <laughs> I can? Neil Lane, like, you clobbers say. you out the door. Right, thank you so much for being here. Oh, Congrats my pleasure. on the book. Thank you. You can pick up a copy of Style Your Wedding with Neil Lane now wherever books are sold. Thank you. Out. All right, Paula Abdul, as we mentioned, launching her new Las Vegas residency on October 22nd to prepare for her upcoming show. She recently partnered with InMode using their body uh, teat system uh, for her arms and face. The Morpheus 9 for her lower face, jawline, and neck. InMode specializes in minimally invasive uh, aesthetic treatments. This is something that's really interesting. The, the body tight system is something that she's taken on. And look, as we talked to Paula, she does that vigorous workout, but she mm -hmm. also works in, in those systems and all the things that they offer as well. We cannot wait for her show in yes, Vegas. I know, very exciting. All right, we're taking one last look at our question of the day. We've been asking you to send in your favorite Mean Girls gifts. Whoa, so fetch, so that's fetch. a classic. Are you a big Mean Girls fan? <laughs> Giant. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we have some good gifts. I don't here. believe you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not wearing pink either, so we'll be asking you oh, a new am, question of the day. Pink. Okay, got it. I'm People Now, so tune in for that. All right, coming up tomorrow, guys, we're joined live by actor Danny Pino, who stars in FX's gang and biker drama Mayans MC. Plus, all the highlights from Harry and Meghan's royal trip to Africa as they wrap up their tour. Thanks for watching. For now, we leave you with one last thing from Donald Faison. Bye, guys. Hello everyone, I'm Donald Faison from Emergence and this is One Last Thing. The last song I had stuck in my head was Spice Girls giving you everything. Giving you everything. The last country I visited, Canada. The last time my kids made me laugh out loud was yesterday. They're just so silly.